Got a list? Time to put it in order. Fred Dwarmfor's house. Top five. Top five meals that I have ever had. This is ranked. To be honest, that list was really biased. Brought to you by Carter Volkswagen. Every morning at 945 on the Mike Salk Show. That's yeah, top ten list. I'm not buying that. Ranked. Well, I guess it depends if you were watching the baseball game last night. I, I was. Uh, I wanted to watch the football game, but I couldn't turn off extra innings. It was getting exciting. And so maybe you saw this happen in the, what, top of the 13th. He has runs. Kiermaier sends a ball into right center field. That's trouble. And that one's off the base of the wall. Diaz coming around to score. Kiermaier to third. The Rays have taken the lead. Not so fast. That's going to be a double. That is a horrible break, and the runner oh. was going. I was just saying that the runner going allows them to score on a double. I think they might. They're going to take the, a look. At the, that hit the top of the wall and go over? They're not only going to look at that. Isn't it umpire's discretion as to where to place the base runner? I'm going to get another look at what, what that ball hit. But, get, but starting the runner was the only chance you were going to score playing no doubles. Such a weird play. We know that if the ball is a ground rule double, right, bounces on the field of play and then over the fence, the runner on first can only advance to third. That's the rule. It's fine. But in this case, the ball bounced off the wall, then the ground, then the right fielder, and then out. So it was the right fielder's fault. And they got rewarded for it by allowing the runner, forcing the runner to stay at third. Makes no sense to this day. What's, I get that that's the rule, but it's ridiculous. So what's the alternate? You would have it him be at third, just the way that the, the ended I up, that I guess? The, I think that the the umpire should have the discretion of saying he scores yeah. based on the fact. He scores there. I don't mind that it's the rule normally on a ground rule double. You only get two bases. Yep, that's the that's rule. Fair. That's yep. fair for both teams. But in this case, the defensive the team went did the, something wrong. Yeah. And then they got rewarded for it. Yeah. That does not feel fair at all. And the umpire should have the discretion to fix that. All right. So with that in mind, the worst rules in sports ranked. The tuck rule is not a rule anymore, or else it would be on this list. <laughs> Get that right out the top. I will admit that at the time in my life, I benefited from the tuck rule. It led to my wife and I ultimately being together. So like, there's a lot of positive vibes wrapped up in that for me. <laughs> But I fully admit that it is a terrible rule called correct, just like yesterday was. Okay? Okay. Another one that won't quite crack the list for me is the divot, uh, hitting the ball out of a the divot. I do think that that's terrible, and I would never hit a ball myself out of a divot, but I don't mind that they punish pros with that stuff. Hey, that's, that's the game. I like that golf is hard for them. Yeah. I suck at golf, so I don't mind taking the ball out of the divot. And every time I've seen it happen on TV, it never really looked like that much of a disadvantage to the player. I, the times I've seen it, well, I'm it sure there's a lot that happened. Westwood this year, unfortunately. He had a real I didn't travesty. See that. Uh, ended up losing the tournament to, was it Brooks Kepka? Who did he end up losing to? They were going down the stretch, and he just he had to hit out of a divot, and it totally ruined his shot mm. and probably cost him a tournament. But, like, hey, them's the breaks. Like, I'm kind of okay with that in golf. It's sort of how golf is played. But I would never do it myself, let's nope. be clear. I moved that ball right out of the divot. Yeah. <laughs> Not messing around with that. So here you go. Here's my top five with those two out of it. Number five, and I know I'm a grumpy old man on this one, but awarding the whole NHL overtime system is now a problem to me. I had no problems with five minutes, five on five, and then call it a tie. I had no issues with that whatsoever. Okay. That's the way that sport is played, and I don't know why they needed to make it super exciting for everybody every night with this, with the sort of phony uh, uh, shootout. I just don't need it. I love a shootout. Yeah, I bet. That's I fine. love a shootout. I, yeah. I don't need it. I was fine with a tie. I lived with a tie for most of my life, and I was just fine with I it. I wish they did it like the All-Star game. They put a light on him and everything. Just kill all the lights. Just spotlight the goalie. and the... Don't need that. I'm all it. good on that one. I so that's number drama. five. Okay, that's number five. Number four, spot foul only for pass interference. Yeah. It, it is ridiculous. And I know that a 15-yard penalty doesn't necessarily equal the right amount either. And I, I know people are afraid of giving NFL refs more power, but they deserve it. Let them decide whether it's a 10-yard penalty for interference or a spot foul. If you tackle the guy out there, it should be a spot foul. If it's incidental and it's, you're not sure exactly what would have happened, make it a 10-yard penalty and a first down and move on. It's ridiculous to give up 50 yards for a ticky-tack penalty. That's just wrong. Okay. Number three, in baseball, not being allowed to appeal 
when the umpire says you did not check your swing. Oh, it's the most maddening thing in the world. So when the ump says you says that you didn't check, that you were okay, you can appeal, and the corner umpire can say, no, you're out. No, yes. you swung. But it can't work the other way. It's ridiculous. Oh, I, I forgot all about that. I'm glad you brought that so up. So stupid. It's going to ruin my day. both ways. <laughs> Just drives me nuts. Number two. This one's obvious. I'm, this is a battle for number one, but I'm going to keep it as number two for now. The N- NFL fumble through the end zone rule is so oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Touchback. You fumble anywhere else totally on agree. the field, and you get to keep the ball if it goes out of bounds. You fumble there, and it goes out of bounds, and it's the other team's ball. It should revert back to where you fumble. Now, the only reason this is not number one is that I'll admit it is kind of exciting when it happens. <laughs> as much as I hate it, <laughs> it's at least like, oh, that's weird. Oh, they're going to get the benefit of that stupid rule. Here you go. True. So I'll go number two for that. Number one, I think, is inarguably the worst rule in all of sports because it's unfair. It's specifically and patently unfair to one team, and that is the NFL overtime rule, which allows somebody to win on the first possession. Yes. It's better than it used to be. I, I prefer what you do now with the matching field goals instead of a touchdown, but I just think that you should play a quarter or at least give, multi- give each team the possession. Yeah, I think that one's pretty inarguable. I don't know anybody that would say that they like it the way it is, which I, is insane. Well, the argument I always hear back is, well, defense is part of the game, too. Okay. Well, so is pitching, but we don't end the extra innings after half an inning. You say the other team gets an opportunity to hit. Yep. You, you both deserve yep. the opportunity to be on offense in any game. But it then makes you no have, sense. like, do you remember Marty Morningweg when he was coach of the Detroit Lions? Yeah, I remember him. He opted to give oh, the yeah. ball to the Bears in overtime. How's Marty doing these days? Is he still coaching? Who does that? <laughs> Marty Morningweg and the Detroit Lions. I think you've answered your own question. <laughs>